All right, Andy, you came up with this idea, so give us a little intro about what we're talking about today. All right. First, I need to say, honey, I know you just called me on the phone, <laughs> but it's 4 o'clock and we do a TV show at 4 o'clock, so yeah. I'll, I'll give you a call back as soon as I can. How does she not know that schedule already, Andy? <laughs> I know. Get it together. <laughs> well, see, I, I'm becoming more of a regular here, so, okay. so she hasn't gotten it necessarily on her schedule yet. So Yeah, let's not let that happen again. <clears throat> All right, so today's topic, and I don't even know, know if we have a show title or not, but it's basically happy 20th birthday, World Wide Web. Um, happy birthday. Happy birthday, yeah, exactly. Next um, year is going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Coming of age. Bar crawl. <laughs> That's a great idea. Um, so, and uh, the reason this came up, last, last week we were talking about MOOCs, of course, and we talked a little bit about teaching philosophy and, and that yeah. sort of thing and, and where MOOCs might fit into that and kind of the direction we're heading in. But um, kind of serendipitously or coincidentally, Michael Wesch had, had written a blog post about the, you know, the 20th anniversary and where we were in 1991 mm -hmm. um, when it came to, you know, society in general, where we were in education. And uh, Michael Wesch was, was basically kind of... Um, how, how do I approach this year? Is it any different uh, than previous years? And where have we come from so far? Um, and so the idea of, of how we teach with the web as this resource tool and, and also where we go forward with this. And um, it just, it, it was a nice kind of reminder for me. And, and even before we started the show, we talked a little bit about, about nostalgia mm -hmm. and yeah. where that stuff fits in. So I, I wanted to be nostalgic, if, if nothing else, today and talk a little bit about where we were you know, what the web has meant to us or, or just general ideas about um, what, what Michael talked about in, in, his, in his article about it, it, it was kind of hopeful and yet, um, you, you know, somewhat of a Groundhog Day, you know, moment yeah. mm -hmm. where we keep going through the same thing over and over again. We get to these places where these new innovations happen and we kind of forget that this happened previously 20 years ago or 40 well, years ago the or same 60 arguments, years ago. Right? Like, Right. Everybody's narcissistic. We're losing all sense of our relative culture, and like, like the same kind of yeah. like you know, damnation of any new technology, any new idea, kind of plays itself out, and not yeah. a virtuous circle, he says, but like a you know, like a horrific cycle right. that we constantly find ourselves in again and again. And I thought that was interesting. I also thought talking about nostalgia, what was interesting about Wesh's post that I read after we talked about it is the five books he talks about he's reading now in preparation for this year, two of which I read when I was in grad school, Frederick Jameson's uh, Postmodernism and David Harvey's, uh, I think it was called The, the Crisis of Postmodernity, or I don't have to, I'll look for the title, I have it here. But either way, I just thought it was fascinating that he brought these two titles up and started talking about them. And these are titles that I was kind of nostalgic for when I actually read literary criticism. <laughs> I'm glad not to, although Harvey's a geographer. But one of the things that's interesting talking about nostalgia, and I'll try and keep this short, is one of the things that Jameson talks about in that postmodern book or the cultural critique of late capitalism, I think that's what he calls it, mm -hmm. um, is this idea of a nostalgia for the present. This idea that we're kind of constantly framing our sense of the past through film and through other things, that we can only kind of experience that moment through this representational media or industry. One of the things that I think Frederick Jameson does really intelligently, though, what the point that West was making, he has no idea of what the web is, really. It's 91 when he finishes the book, it's probably 84 when he starts writing it, is the idea that the web was going to bring so much of what he talked about between the idea of nostalgia, but also this idea of globalism and networks of decentered power and finance capital. Hmm. The web would actually take all those theories and instantiate them in some kind of manifest of a physical kind of network of power, of wealth. And I think the 20 year anniversary and this kind of coming of age for the web is going to start for us to realize what that means in terms of power, wealth, and all this stuff. So I think those books are still very relevant culturally uh -huh. for what the web is and how we think it and how we imagine it. Right. I, one of the one of the quotes or one of the descriptions that I that I zeroed in on was in in Wesh's blog post was he calls it the most amazing collaboration and creativity machine ever created. Mm -hmm. um, 
a pretty heady statement and, and kind of along the lines of, and you start to think about, about this 20 years on, where the Internet fits in to the global in inventions. And, and sure. I think it, as we're discovering, and, and as it is 20 years on, this can be compared to the advent of, of television. Mm -hmm. um, and before that, the advent of, of film, if you want to, or um, at some point you get back to you know Gutenberg and that sort of thing. Um, it's almost the advent <clears throat> of an epic. Right. Like, because he talks about, when he's talking about, in that article, he brings up the Harvey book, which is actually the conditions of post-modernity. Sorry about that. But he talks about the idea of we move from an industrialized to a deindustrialized nation mm -hmm. over the course of, say, from the 80s to the 90s. And the Internet really makes for those 50% of people who are working in the information field in America in 1991. Mm -hmm gives them the frame that that's where we'll be working for. And no preparation through education could have gotten people ready for this. Right. So we're not just talking about here comes the TV, here comes the here comes a completely new epoch right. that's right. going to change the education, industry, um, financial markets. Every basic element of our culture will change based on this new epic. Right. And it's going to be like a historical chapter. Right. Like here was the industrial age, here is the post-industrial age. Mm -hmm. well, but what's interesting about it, I mean, we were joking earlier, I was nine years old when, <laughs> when the web was created. Nine years old. But the, there's this thing, and Wesh pointed it out, was this idea that we think that, you know, you blame the web for, you know, the, the kids are distracted these days because they've got their YouTube and they've got, you know, probably not Twitter, but Facebook and all this stuff. They're texting all over the place, and we throw technology under the bus and say it's because of that that they're this way. Yeah. And he points out rightly so that in 91, in the 80s, kids were distracted back then. Right. I mean, we had MTV. They had that stuff anyway. So right. and That's what like, academic arguments often do. Yeah. They often bring into, like, this wider spectrum of, like, hey, if you just read back on 50 years ago or even 20 years ago in our case, mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't that different. Mm -hmm. There are some different particularities that the web offers. And I think what's interesting about these particularities is that what we see in Wesh's argument, well, not in Wesh's argument, but in the, in the books that he's referring to, is that what the web provides us is the metaphor that those thinkers were looking for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the embodiment of that decentralization of power and of global capital and of all these things. Well, the web actually was that. And as it matures, all the theory of postmodernism mm -hmm. became embodied in this completely new medium sure. that is in many ways epic and of a new epoch. Right. You know what I mean? It's <clears throat> amazing that those, for me, the works he talks about completely build into how we start to think about that medium that we didn't have the language and more than that, the experience mm -hmm. of being a part of. Right. Or at and, least most people do. And I think what this some, in some ways gets at is the idea that we are now living in the internet. You know, everything yeah. that we decide and, 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 and go forward with our lives in many cases, you know, the internet touches. I've had several conversations recently yeah. with, with teachers and educators about, so how does the internet change your life and how, does, how are things been different? I had a conversation with someone else about retail yeah. and, you know, looking for jobs in retail and, mm -hmm. and the idea, you know, is retail going to exist in, in a few years? Is it all going to be done online? How much will be retail and how much will be service oriented things? And, you know, it, countless subjects yeah. and, and areas, niches and that sort of thing it, going forward is like, how is the internet going to impact that sort of thing? Well, and, and that draw right back to it of, um, like I think of uh, when the airlines started getting wireless access and there, mm -hmm. were, there were certain people of course that said well damn I mean that was the one time where I didn't have to check my email was if I had a flight yeah. for four hours I could right. I could get away with saying I'm not connected because I'm in the air and now sure. that's going away it's gonna get to this point where it's like you're always connected well yeah okay. well there's also the question that I think both of you are bringing up like how it's gonna change the work we do how it's gonna change this idea of convenience and I think one of the things that Wesh is bringing up in that article that's kind of really striking is we haven't really thought of it beyond that, yeah. Yeah. beyond the financial, beyond mm -hmm. the kind of economic, behind the idea of convenience. Like we haven't let go of some of our individual notions mm -hmm. of what we need, what convenience is and stuff. So have to really collaborate on a completely different yeah. level through a completely different medium. Yeah, and, and th the whole idea that, that what the Internet has done is that we've kind of foisted our culture onto it as much yeah. as it has provided us with with new ideas and new ways of communication. I mean, it's become this this social thing um, 
and and we're back to digital storytelling. You know, we're back yeah. to the storytelling idea. Um, everybody can share their stories, and and it, this is. I mean, we've got four minutes left or whatever, but this yeah. is one of those. This is one of those areas that, to me, yeah. you know, is a whole semester long worth of material to to see how the internet has has impacted oh, yeah. our lives. I mean, in Jeff's doing, Jeff McClarkin, who was a professor at UMW, is doing a the history of the information age. But like we were saying earlier before the show, I'd like to see just a 20-year compact history of the last 20 years of the web yeah. and really get deep into what that's meant mm -hmm. and where the web has developed. Because there have been so many talks about the web is dead or, our, you know, we've talked about it even, our iPhones, iPads, killing the web. You know, mm -hmm. is the Internet going to live but the web just dead? Sure. Right. Yeah, and I mean... We've had our arguments about that, or discussions, sure. and some of them have been intense. Some of them have been have been kind of silly. Um, but you just, I mean, it's almost like the internet is just so overpowering that you know none of that right. stuff matters, and it just will kind of change into what we morph it into, and instead That's of right. instead of any one company kind of taking it over or, or trying to monopolize it. Okay. So I'm 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 pretty optimistic about it. I I certainly agree with his statement about the. You know this creativity of the mach machine because it's it's become become obvious that that's that's where it is. Is there any hope? You know, I, I read about okay back in 1991 we had this idea of this uh, industrialized classroom. You know, the the rows yeah. and the columns and stuff. And now even as we tour the Monroe Building, a lot of the classes we walk into and there's those same yeah. rows and yeah. those things. Is there any hope, or is it false for us to to hope that the web or the internet is going to help us break away from some of that, or is it just? I, I think there is simply because there's more information and there's more there's more exposure to other people and and doing things differently. Um, right. So there's more there's more exposure of people. Breaking apart those classrooms and and getting in, and and some of the rooms in Monroe are kind of structured so that you can collaborate a little bit more. And I think yeah. the more we're exposed to those kinds of ideas, uh, but it, you know we're, we're undoing decades of of history, yeah. um, and yeah. so we just have to kind of undo that with with our conversations and our connections that we have with other people. Yeah, and as much as we get nostalgic for the web, it's only twenty years old. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we're really a, like you know it's it is exciting because yeah. we're still in the yeah. beginning. The history of modern man, it's it really is still an infant. You know, and there's the like inter, I guess there's dog years, which are one year is equal seven. It's more like internet years. You know, we're in we're still infancy, and it's it's been twenty. So. And the fact is, is it's amazing to think that we are in a field with many people out there that we feel like we still could change it because it needs to be changed mm -hmm. and things need to be kind of rethought and that's kind of what we do. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, and the half-life for technology is constantly, you know, changing to the point where it's like the time to certain adoption of technologies to the CD, to, mm -hmm. the, to the web video, to all this stuff is just dropping down closer to where it just feels like stuff is instantaneous, like stuff is happening and moving so quickly all around you. We just exactly. got to keep our garlic, our garlic around our necks yeah. and keep the <laughs> corporate vampires as far away from education as exactly. possible. Well, another, another encouraging part of, of, of Michael Lesh's post was, was another quote that I wanted to um, get out. It was, that be a part of the journey. It, meaning teachers and, and instructors, be a part of their journey and help them find meaning and purpose in an oversaturated, fragmented, and distracting world full of self-indulgent temptations. And again, it's, it gets to that idea about um, not standing in front of the classroom and being the font of all knowledge, you know, yeah. helping them and guiding through this, this kind of torrent of information um, yeah. and, and being there to uh, you know, problem solve and, and have them do real world projects. Um, and, and a lot of that information um, can be garnered from the internet and, and then students can then contribute it back and, uh, you know, create something even better than what we started with. And that's also part of this idea of infancy. It's like yeah. the forms in its infancy. We're in front of these webcams being narcissistic because we don't know <laughs> what it means yet. Yeah. I don't think it's bad. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's often like, you know, everyone's like poo poo. It's like, no, it's like film. In the ninth, from 1900 to 1910 was finding its form. Yeah. You know, and it, all the way up and until Griffith did it in 1916, he kind of came up with a formula, which was amazing in some ways, but also at the same time restricted our idea of what film narrative could be. Exactly. So all different alternatives were kind of fell away. And I'm wondering if that's right now happening with the web to some degree. And that's why a history of the web would be interesting. Yeah. Think of all the possibilities and then what has started to cement as our kind of reality of that web. Yeah. And we're not going to be able to answer that because no, we've run out of time. Because our time is up. But that's a good place to leave it at. So Absolutely. Yeah. happy birthday to the web. Happy, and happy birthday, a, web. Here's to another 20. We love you, babe. <laughs>
Take care. <laughs> Fucking good, man. Was that fun?